Hello and welcome to my channel. I am Andrea and you're very welcome to Beyond the Pink Door. So I thought I would do a little sewing catch-up today, a little review of my week and tell you what my sewing plans are for next week. Now normally I would do this on a monthly basis but I have lots of free time at the moment, lots of sewing time so um, yeah let's give this a go and see how it goes. So Monday kicked off my sewing make this week. Uh, Quilter and Stitch are doing a sewing retreat every weekend. It's a virtual one. They're doing it on their Facebook group page so if it's something that you think you might enjoy join the group page and um, yeah join in. So it's a, a very simple little setup where we just chat among ourselves and we show what we're making, ask any questions if we've any problems and have a bit of a laugh. And you know what? It's just, I set up my iPad and it's there as little company beside me as I'm sewing. It's lovely. So this week I decided to make the Audrey top. I cut it out on Sunday. I had like mass cut out afternoon on Sunday. And I made the, yeah, the Audrey. Now I made it in the fabric that I planned. So that was in my last video of my plans. So it's a lovely cotton jersey from Anne-Marie in the Crafty Studio. I made the version with the bow. I just, I really love it. Now I actually have pins here on the seams because I, I thought the neck was going to fit me fine. Uh, I tried it on while I was making it and it seemed to sit nicely. But just where those seams are, they seem to kind of point up, which I don't like. So I'm going to readdress that now during the week. So I made a size 10 and I'm wondering should I have made a size 10 and then graded it up maybe to an 8 at the neckline to make the band narrower or should I readjust the little seams. They seem to go up at quite a sharp angle so I'm thinking on this one I think I'm going to adjust it. I'm going to open it up and I think I'm going to make the seams there more like a shoulder angle so we'll see how that works and yeah we'll readjust for the next one I'm going to make another one with the knot I really really like I really really like the bow it was a little bit of a faff me just putting the bow together but once the bow is together and nice and neat it stays in all day so I think you need quite a nice substantial jersey to make it so the cotton jersey is perfect I'm not so sure if the viscose jersey would have enough body. I think it would be just a little bit limp, but I really, really like this. I've asked Anne-Marie to hold me a metre of this fabric again as well in, for my next order, just in case it sells out, because I think I might make a little skirt to go with it. So it's kind of like a little faux dress. I don't know, we'll see. I'd also love to hack this into a full dress. So to use just the top bodice part as far as the waist and then add a skirt to it. So I'm thinking of the Nemesia skirt because I really like that. Um, yeah so I, th I think that's going to be in one of my plans because I really just love the top. I think it's going to be very cute when I make the skirt to match. So there's one of my plans. But all these things change on a daily basis. So and my second make of the week is the Lula cardigan. Love this. This is the soft sweatshirting I showed in my last video. It's from Maeve's Dress Fabrics. It's really, really soft on the inside. Love this. It's been really warm here all week and this morning it's actually quite cold. So this cardigan is just perfect. I managed to squeeze it out of the meter I had got from Maeve's, which I didn't think was possible, but it happened. I made the version with the little bend on the bottom. So if you remember my last one had the little flounce frill. I started making this on Monday evening after I finished the Audrey. Tried it on halfway through and realised that it was really really small. So uh, during the process of what the hell is after going wrong because I cut it out the normal size I figured out that I had been using the wrong seam allowance. So I had totally no excuse because it's written on the pattern pieces. It's three eighths of a seam allowance but because I'd been making the Audrey top which had five eighths I just horsed into it and went five eighths which on four seams do you know it, it made an inch of a difference four quarters yeah obviously yeah um, made an inch of a difference which it's not a tight fitting cardigan but it's a close fitting cardigan and that inch made a massive difference um, 
Now I absolutely love how it turned out but it was definitely one of those you know made with love and swear words and I added that little label to the back of it. I'll insert a picture and show you. I took out the zigzag that I had sewn it with because I had zigzagged at the 5 8 and then I had also overlocked it. So I took out the zigzag, left the overlocking as the stitching and then I top stitched on the outside. So really I had done it, I had taken out the zigzag so quickly that it didn't leave a mark which was great because then I would have been just so upset. Uh, but in the process of doing the unpicking I managed to stretch the neckline a little bit which made putting in the collar a bit more of a faff and I don't think it's come maybe as close to the edge as it should but it's there and it's actually really comfy. Then um, then I realised that I had cut the bottom band too narrow as in it wasn't long enough because I had cut it to the length where I would have been inserting a zip but of course I was using the fasteners so that wasn't long enough so I had to add in a piece to the back of it. I think it's about maybe I had added about maybe two and a half inches of a piece in the back of it. So I actually, I made a little feature of it on the back. Um, I will insert the little picture, that's where I put the label. And it actually turned out really nice, quite quite um, quite quirky. quirky. I, oh, I top stitched it all, so do you know what? It looks like a design feature. So I am, um, yeah, I just absolutely loving snap fasteners at the moment. I went on eBay a couple of weeks ago because I was looking, well I went on Google and I found it on eBay so I was looking for this tool to put in the plastic snap fasteners. So in the process of finding that I also found other things from the same seller because that's just how it goes isn't it? So I got this little kit of metal snap fasteners. There. So I think this was about I think it was eight pounds. I think that's all it was. So it came with 30 gold, which I used on this. It's like a, it's not a shiny gold, it's like a bronzy gold. It's really lovely. And there's also shiny silver ones as well. Came with all the tools to insert them, obviously. Came with a little hammer, and but didn't come with instructions. So a little bit of Googling, a little bit of YouTubing and I figured out how to put them in. Um, very important, of course, to use interfacing underneath or the little receiver comes out. Um, I will do a little video, um, I'll probably put it on IGTV to show how these go on. And I also got, and I haven't tried these out yet, um, I think these were about five pounds. I got um, like small little, a little kit of small little eyelets. Now, I have no immediate plans for these, but they were so cheap, they all, they all come in handy. So that was my fasteners, and I definitely will be using more fasteners. So I made, yes, I made the Audrey, this, and yeah, really, really pleased with this, despite all my own mistakes, really. I think I was just so convinced that I wasn't going to get it out of the meter that I wasn't really looking at the details. But yeah, I love how it turned out. So my next make of the week is a pair of trousers. I had gone onto Pinterest to have a look for ideas for that beautiful fabric I got from Lamazi Fabrics last week for a dress and got totally distracted by summer trousers. So I thought, oh God, I really haven't had any luck in making trousers. The construction of trousers, very straightforward. It's the fitting of trousers. <laughs> That's a complete and utter nightmare. And I'm just determined to actually make it happen. So I was also looking through all my patterns and I found a lovely pattern that I had used last year. Now I'd initially bought it for the dress. So it's this pattern, it's Simplicity 8891 and I'd used it last year to make shorts. So I knew that the shorts fitted really lovely. I have them here. I made them out of a lovely pink linen. They have a lovely curved waistband They've got pockets which I actually put in. They've just got a dart at the back and very creased but they fit so lovely. Oh they've got a zip at the side. Yeah, so they were they were a real hit. Now they I just I made them it really was just a chance and they fit lovely so I thought well okay do you know what if the fit of the shorts is lovely 
then do you know what? The fit of the trousers is just going to be so easy. So I cut out the trousers. I wanted to make them like above the ankle length. So I shortened them. I shortened the pattern up initially by three and a half inches on the shortening line. And um, yeah, I love the fit on the top. I love the fit in the shorts area. Um, I did a lot of pinning of the fabric to make sure that I had the pattern matching. I'll show you. So I made them. I'm all colours today. I made them in, I'll stand up here, I made them in this lovely cotton that I got last year from Love Fabric Ireland. I'm really pleased with the pattern matching here. The comfort factor is lovely. The curved waistband is just perfect, nice and loose in the morning, gets tight as the day goes on. But I have loads of smile lines, loads of gathers. I'll insert a picture of them. In fact, I think I'll do another vlog just on my trouser making adventures. Um, they're really, really comfy. And I know that if I bought them in the shop, I'd be really pleased with them. But because I've made them and because I've done all the reading of trouser adjustments and the full seat, flat seat, full inner thigh, full calf, knock knees, <laughs> which was a new one for me yesterday, as in an adjustment for knock knees. I have some gathering at the side of my knees on the outside, which is showing that I should put in a knock knee adjustment. So that's something else to learn. So these are basically my toile. I'm quite happy with them. They're very wearable. I really like them. Love the length. I put a slit um, on the end of them. They're yeah, they're lovely. The fabric has a little stretch and I will adjust. I'm going to make all the adjustments to the pattern and give them a go again. So I took them in a lot. They needed, I suppose they are like a peg leg on the pattern, but I wanted them a lot slimmer fitting. So I found that they were just a little bit too baggy. So I took them in a lot down the leg. Then I had to leave them out a little around my calves because I have full calves. And then I've ended up with some gathering at the knees. I'm going to make the adjustments and I'm going to plough on with the whole trousers adventures. I'm not going to let it beat me. So yeah, that's a to be continued, um, my adventures in the trials and tribulations of trouser making. So the other plan I had during the week was I cut out the purple cardigan in teal. Um, I went to make this the other day and then realised that um, I didn't have any overlocker thread at all that would work on it. And I like to make the um, I like to make the, the Harper cardigan fully on the overlocker. So I've seen a few people, my lovely friend um, Kira, who is Emerald Fibres on Instagram. I noticed that she's been using a lovely rainbow overlocker thread recently and I did ask her where she got it from and she said that a friend had given it to her. So I'm on the I'm, I'm really looking for some rainbow overlocker thread. I'd love some in like primary colours and I'd love some in like a pastel shade. So I think if I had those, that would just tie up all my overlocking. It would be really nice. So I think I will actually make this during the week and I'll just put in a bunch of different colours into it and see how, see how it goes. Because um, I kind of like a little bit of quirkiness in my makes anyway. But this is a lovely Pontaroma I got from Crafty Studio and I also have it in a purple colour and I have overlocker thread to match this funnily enough and I have a plan to make um, another cardigan in that these were going to be two Harper cardigans but I actually went through all my patterns during the week so say I'm going to do like a ca catalogue of them on the Trello app uh, I was watching Tamlin sewing on the time during the week she has a lovely video up of um, how to digitize your stash of fabric on a Trello board. Now I never have a massive stash of fabric, I can see it, it's on, it's on my shelf there, I can see it all. <laughs> it faces me every day and I work my way through it. So generally when I buy fabric um, it's never on the shelf for too long because I just, I just love making. But I do have a massive pattern stash and what I'm finding is I am um, I'm forgetting some of my patterns. I have two boxes of the big four patterns and I have all my PDFs. Now some of them are printed and cut and used already but other ones are just in files on my computer. 
in looking through all of the patterns I found the Stylark Estelle Ponte jacket. Oh, I've lost my train of thought there, haven't I? I'm actually going to do a Trello board of all of my patterns because, simply because, last Sunday when I was doing my, my cutting out session, um, if you remember in my last video, I, um, I'm going to make a, a Betty dress. Betty dress? Penny dress? Can't remember. One or the other, isn't it? So I printed out my pattern from my computer. And then when I was looking for one of my other patterns, I found that I'd already printed out, stuck together, and even cut out the pattern for the dress. So thankfully I hadn't actually stuck the PDF together because then I would have been really kicking myself. But I just put it back into the printer, put the paper back into the printer and just thought, okay, we'll get on with that. So I think if I had the Trello board, I could actually just put in some information into it saying, you know, have I printed? What have I, have I used it? When did I use it? What adjustments I made? Maybe I think I can put in all that information. I'm not actually quite sure. It's something that is going to be on the plans for the week. So I was thankful to Tamlin for actually, you know, giving a good in-depth um, YouTube demonstration of that. I link Tamlin's YouTube channel here so you can you can have a little look at that. But anyway, getting back to my Stylark Estelle Ponte jacket. I'll put up a little picture of it. It's a waterfall fronted cardigan. It's really, really fast. I made one in boiled wool um, last winter. And it's, it's really lovely. Now it was slightly tight on the sleeves and things, but that is a normal thing for me anyway. Um, so I'm going to make it in the Ponte, because that's what it is, a style Ponte jacket. Um, now I only have a metre and a half, so it's going to be a bit of a squeeze. And I have a funny feeling that when I made the boiled one last year, I had to do, say, a two-part sleeve just to squeeze it out. So yeah, fingers crossed I'll be able to do that. I might do a little like sew along with with you on that because that's such a simple cardigan. It's ideal for things like um, the Ponte Roma or the boiled wool because they don't fray. So it's just got basically cut lines on the outside of it. Um, so yeah, that's that's one of my plans during the week. I wasn't too bothered this week anyway, not being able to make the Harper cardigan because it was so warm. I actually wasn't going to wear it, but it's gone a little bit chillier, chillier again. So. There are my two cardigans I'm going to make during the week. And then I also cut out a dress yesterday. Now I have a big love for a denim dress. I've always loved a denim dress. And I have this beautiful, really, really light denim. In fact, it could be chambray. I'm not quite sure. I can never tell the difference. But I have this beautiful, very, very light denim from Crafty Studio. Um, I probably have it possibly a year with the plans of making this exact dress. So again, I found this when I went through all of my patterns. It is Simplicity 8014 and I'm going to make view C. So this is it. So I had the pattern cut out already. <laughs> I love when that happens because I didn't plan for this last year. And I've cut out and I hope this is going to work now. I am going to make it during the week, so time will tell. I've cut it out. I've cut out the pattern, so it's a 10, grading down to a 12, grading down to the 14. I always need the 14 on the hips. So I'm really looking forward to making this. I was going to make VUD with, like, scoot hem, which I really like, but I think I'd get more wear out of VU C with the straight across hem on it. So that's my plans for the week. Um, I have that dress cut out, I have the Harper cardigan cut out, and I'm going to do the Estelle cutting out. I think I will do that in a video. And then, what else have I to tell you at all? Oh yes, I got the Broad Triangulé fabric. Well, I haven't actually got it yet. I have it ordered. I found it during the week on uh, lovefabric.ie. Put it in here and I'll actually link it into the description box because it's really really nice. Um, it wasn't terribly expensive, I can't remember how much, but it wasn't terribly expensive and I'm really looking forward to getting it. In making my trousers and making a few things um, there's a big gap in my wardrobe for 
white tops. So that really, you know, it really pushed me on to looking for the white fabric. Gaudre Engle, Engle, I don't know, I always say it wrong. This is a ready to wear top that I'm wearing today. It's a little sleeveless one, so it's ideal under the little cardigan. And it's got all the like eyelet pattern on the top here, which I really like. So I have a little thing for this kind of fabric. I'm not so fussed on, say, a white jersey top. I think that would be a little bit too see-through and maybe not so flattering. But I do, I love a nice white cotton top. So, got, well, got my order in for that, so I'll get that during the week. So I'll show you that in my next video. And then in sewing news, um, I was wearing a dress last in my last video. And it was fabric I bought from Maeve's Dress Fabrics, which sold out. It was really, really lovely. Um, but Maeve has told me that she's actually managed to get an order, um, get it ordered. So it's not in yet, but it is ordered. So if you'd like some of that, pop onto Maeve's Dress Fabrics. I'm sure she'll probably put it in her Instagram stories and that when it arrives in. It's really, really nice. I washed the dress again during the week and the pine needles in the pockets didn't survive this time, they're gone. And it's an absolutely gorgeous fabric. It has, hold it, it has held its colour really, really well, which I'm very surprised at, because I find that maybe after a couple of washes of jerseys that have a dark background, they start going a little bit cloudy, but no, it's still as navy as it was when I bought it. And then in other news then, Anne-Marie in Crafty Studio has got her A0 printer. So we are very lucky in this country because now we have um, two options for having our A0 patterns printed. So this is when we get our PDFs and we have to go through the torture of printing them out in A4 sheets on our printer, sticking them together, cutting them out. So now Anne-Marie can print them out in A0 and post us the patterns which is amazing and we also have this service from Quilt Yarn Stitch as well so I think this is just absolutely super up to a year ago we had no option and um, I did order some from maybe the UK or that but I found that by the time it was posted and everything it just it made it just made it very expensive but anyway we have our own two printers in the country now which is just amazing so if you go on to either of their websites you'll be able to see how you can actually order them uh, every time you buy a PDF pattern, you will have the option of A4 printing or A0 printing. And it will tell you how many sheets. So you pay per sheet and then it's very nicely posted to you. So if you hate the A4 printing, this makes us all so happy now. Um, so yeah, I think that's a roundup of what I was up to this week. Um, and a few of my plans for next week. So again, thank you so much for watching. Thanks to anybody who subscribes. And if you watch me and you haven't been subscribing, hit the subscribe button. And yeah, I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you. Bye bye.